who might have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The goodness of the Lord is what causes repentance. Can anybody relate to that? And that repentance leads to salvation, okay? Huh. I'm excited if don't nobody else is. It's personal for me, y'all, okay? I need to have my house cleaned out often, all right? Hallelujah, my spiritual house.
Worshiping for just a moment. Oh, yeah, do thing, Hallelujah. I heard somebody say, Do your thing. We're going to trust the Lord is talking Amen. to you, brother. Without 
Let's worship. Worship the Lord. Anybody feel like dancing? Let's dance to the glory of God. Can y'all do that?
everybody? You want, you want, you want, uh, you want maybe we should ask him to do another one? I bet you if you guys said we want more, we want more. What do you think, Quincy? Can you give him another one? I think with all that authority out there for the kingdom of heaven's sake. There you go. Every praise, every praise belong to him. Is that right?
grateful. Every play, praise, praise belongs to him. Jesus is Lord. All right, before I bring him up, and, and just because I have to, you know, uh, this isn't free. I'm going to tell you right now that the city of Flint sent me a bill for $3,306. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. The city of Flint is billing the Juneteenth celebration over $3,000 for police coverage for the parade. I hate to tell you this, guys. I don't have it. And it really be hard for me to come up with $3,000 on my own. But you know, 3,000 of us giving a buck a piece ain't gonna hurt nobody. All right? We got about 900 folks right up in here. And if everybody could reach into their pocket and share a dollar with us, it would make my burden a lot lighter. All right? Consider that. We've got gentlemen walking around with freedom ribbons in honor of the Soweto massacre. You can buy one of those. You can stop by the ad table and just drop it off. We ain't mad at you. But we're going to be here regardless. They don't scare us. All right? Can I get all the beautiful people to go woo-woo? No, I need all the beautiful people to go woo-woo. I said the beautiful people. Nice, nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to bring forward Raise It Up Youth, and then you're going to have a special performance from Kevin Collins and the Kungana Dancers. All right, Jim, bring him on. Poetry Slam in Philadelphia. So we have a few selections that we have uh, ready for you guys and we hope you enjoy it. The poem that we are about to do is about embracing our natural hair and the things that we go to to get the styles that we wear. You talk about the small ones? So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I don't know what we did with it. You gotta ask my dad. Naturally, it's just be like, we're going to start with the weak old twist out hair. After you wash and condition, deep condition with a dime-sized amount of product, grab the hair and begin braiding towards the back. A dime-sized amount for my baby hair? So I made my own shampoo of honey, biotin, olive oil, rehydrated cucumbers, two cups of WD-40, Windex, three cups of fertilizer and red mulch, lay salt and vinegar chip vest, Swanson's chicken broth, hummus, Eco-friendly brake fluid, opium, great granddad's dry skin shavings, and two ounces of blood from a hairless rat. Just to seal in moisture, of course. So, am I going to Sally's or Home Depot? Home Depot. <laughs> Women. Panicking trying to prevent our scarves from slipping off in the middle of the night. Getting arthritis from bantu knots and two-strand twists. Spending $50 on all type of products and still in need for some style for my natural hair. Hey. My hair is my wife. She has to be prepped, pampered, washed, styled, treated. I work a nine to five to buy products to keep some style for my curls. My hair is my side chick, always thirsty, needing attention. I can't keep her happy. She always thirsty, needing attention. I can't keep her happy. See, we're in that transitioning phase. These girls ain't loyal, but they have loyal fans always trying to pull them. Ooh, can I touch your hair? I buy pomades, oils, lotions, leave-ins. I break the bank with products, striving to find the perfect styles and fit into my curl pattern. I mean, I wash, condition, detangle, rinse, moisturize, detangle, twist, wrap my hair, let it sit, untwist, retwist, pull back with the bobby pin, slick back with leave-in, put a palm full of edge control, and you want to touch it? No, 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 no. You can't run your fingers through all of my hard work searching YouTube videos the night before for 10 different styles. Damn two knots. Didn't work. Right out. Didn't, Didn't work. work. Watch and go. Didn't work. Forget it. I'm rocking a fro today. And no, I don't want to meet your beauty. 
beautician. I don't need your card or referral, and I'm not gonna use your perm kit. My hair is not a political statement, and yes, good hair is a myth. What is good hair? Society makes us believe that good hair is equivalent to bundles of Malaysian wave and silk press weaves made to be sold. It's all processed. And learning to love yourself is already a process. Whoever said length equated to health lied. When are we going to grow tired of refusing to embrace ourselves? And then there's those, I will never go natural folks, telling me I should straighten my hair because it looks too short, too thick, too nappy, too effy. Too taboo for westernization. I go weary with relaxers cultivating my character. Don't perm my culture. It's your frivolous ignorance that needs a relaxer. At birth, we fall hair first into America's bone straight customs. Immediately locked into a faulty beauty cell, split ends and split pride. I want to wear my love like I wear my hair and appreciate its entanglement. I rock my fro like my fitted. That perm stuff, I ain't with it. Gratata. Hi, my name is Deja, and I'm gonna be doing a poem about hip hop, and it's basically just about hip hop. So it's about music as well. So. Everybody is in the kitchen doing the Steve Martin and I'm here, catching up on 40 winks. Really, I just don't want to see nobody nose dive because they know they can't dance or sing or rap, but won't nobody say nothing because the importance of music is what keeps them healed. It is what keeps them together. The, the smiles it lets in, the smiles that stretch from basement to party to bedroom to windows cracked some with your secrets rolling up my back. 2 a.m. and my radio all the way up, all up in here, all up in these music-inspired memories. Remember where music came from. Scooter, Scooter and me had a long day at the plantation, so we decided to make up a new song or inside tape that always tangles, never rip. Hip-hop comes from all different generations, all different genres. Teach yourself how to flow it, how to use it, how to hear it, how to listen. When it is taken away, you are drawn back to reality. You're, you're taken away from your instrumental dreams. Your dreams will start singing to you. Everybody is in the kitchen doing the Steve Martin and I think I will join them. Destiny again, and I'm going to be performing a piece that is about basically what I think my purpose in life is. Crafted from the mud, your fingerprints mold my perfection. Saved by his shed blood. To live in a world of imperfection. A blank canvas. No paintbrush, no paint, just dirt. You see, he took earth and then carved me from a little piece of his lungs. He gave me his tongue and then said, breathe. Both blessed and cursed with the curiosity of Eve, he sang a lullaby to me and then said, go. Why he did, I suppose I'll never know, since to live in a world where everywhere you turn, your faith is being tested, where scientific facts state the opposite of what your beliefs have suggested, and the worst part of it all is we as Christians won't address it. Beyond the walls of our congregation, and despite of the many days in church sitting on the first row, I've always found myself speaking for those young thugs on death row. I've always attracted troubled souls. But these be kings and queens, my heart says. Despite of what the news and society says, my God told me to go. 
and their kingdoms aren't made of gold, no, but like royalty. They walk with their heads held high. Running the block with their million dollar handshakes, they've maintained their kingdom since they were yay high, and I have always empathized with these kings who are hungry and humble, who are willing and hardworking, and only ever sought out for a sense of accomplishment to accommodate the standards of royalty, pushed away by the cashmere suited church body who seemed to be too good for somebody dressed so casually, who's just another human being as you are. Why are we ashamed to get dirt thrown on a name whose body derived from mud? Remember where you came from. Crafted from Your fingerprints mold my perfection. <laughs> Saved by his shed Sent to live in a world of imperfection. do today is about body image. It's really about appearance and the things that a lot of women in the era that we live in now struggle with and it's basically about the things that I've been through and how I learned how to embrace myself as a full figure woman. Okay. I've never been skinny. Just a head too thick and a little bit bigger than most of my peers. I am the high school representative of what Southern cooking done well looks like. But I dream of being one of the 559 million, 58,015 skinny women living in the United States. And then maybe men wouldn't keep me a secret. They say I'm just their friend, but I quit to claim me as theirs in privacy. Nobody wants a big girl. They want to be able to look at you and pass you within the same glance, unashamed to be placed in the same sentence, attaching them to my name. All my life I've gained nothing but the weight tipping the scale of my confidence. My body has become the unspoken curse isolating me within the walls of my family's southern hospitality. I find salvation in calories, a mother's love in home cooking, acceptance within my taste buds, worshiping anything that leaves a sweet sensation on the tip of my tongue telling my grandmother that I'm not hungry when I haven't eaten since yesterday. Yearning for every ounce of fat to be lifted from the visual spectrum of my body like my limbs have been called home to the gods. They say it takes hard work to be pretty. Well, I'm sucking in more than just my gut. Girdles have become the straight jackets that will one day squeeze me skinny. See, perfection is a disease that has been nipping at our waistline since way before the 90s. And we need to grasp hold of the fact that trying to be perfect is like climbing on a ladder to heaven that will never even allow you to see above the clouds. I watched as one of my classmates' health deteriorate as she hung on the fence of anorexia as if she was attempting to pull off what was left of the meat from her soon-to-be-revealing bones when one of your classmates passes out and is hospitalized because she hasn't eaten in three days. This is a problem. I don't want to end up like her. So wrapped up inside of myself that I've become secluded within the twilight of my fixation with becoming flawless. Every cringing, every time I see a full body picture of myself, every time you hear the words too big to be pretty or too pretty to be a big girl, it's like nails scraping against a chalkboard. Except all I can feel, a razor blade scraping against my skin to show me what liposuction feels like. I need that nip tuck. Nipping at my flesh until there's nothing left to tuck in. I'd rather be my size and transparent than to ever let anyone see the corpse of what I used to be. I have battle scars encrusted within the bare reflection of my body that won't fade from my skin. Don't Photoshop me skinny. Photograph me for a figure so that they can see what curves are supposed to look like. Oh. 
short people problems. So how you guys feeling? Y'all enjoyed the poetry so far? Awesome. Okay, well, these awesome ladies are a part of Raise It Up Youth Poetry Team. We're sending them to Philadelphia oh. this summer to compete. I am honored to coach them. We have a couple more poems for you guys. But before I do this one, we have a... Maya Angelou tribute event coming up on June 26th at U of M Flint. We are partnering with U of M Flint's Black Student Union. So if you want more information, you can see us and see them. They're walking around with flyers. So all right, here's this poem. So I got a question for y'all real quick. Who knows, you know, how much in the media they're talking about like you're either too skinny or too big or too light or too dark. It's like you're never good enough, right? Like everybody has that issue with something. So I decided to write a poem about what it's like to be a skinny black girl because I feel like it's kind of hard out here. So, poem. See, this world ain't got much for skinny black girls. Got mothers telling you childbirth will be impossible, but don't let that stop you from having four babies. Got grandmas questioning how deep her melanin runs. Maybe somebody on her daddy's side ain't black. Maybe that's where she get it from or doesn't get it from. Got friends telling you you're lucky. You can eat whatever you want. Got doctors telling you diabetes and how blood pressure runs in your family. Got family telling you not to push away those plates piled high with hot food and seasoned with guilt trips. Stop watching me eat. I hate it. It's not that I'm spoiled or lazy or ungrateful for your hard work. It's just not worth watching you stare at my fork. Each time I lift it to my lips, your disdain makes meals much harder to digest. But I guess... You aren't stripped bare before your mirror, wondering how God got it all mixed up. Yeah, you're black enough, but no curves in all the right places. Chanting, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made to your affection until you both believe it. Society ain't got much for skinny black girls. Turn skinny black women, turn size zero jeans, turn 32 B cup, turn 81 pounds on a good day. Turned half these stores, got nothing in my size, got women staring up and down my lack of thighs, telling me I think I'm better than them. Got men telling me they need something soft to hold on to. Well, I'm sorry that all the wrong parts of me are soft, that fondling my heart don't sound so attractive. Believe me, it doesn't feel good either. You can't grasp hold of its beating, keep its rhythm. My spirit is too thick to be handled by someone who only wants to grasp the tangible. Skinny girls become turntables too often, makeshift DJs. We wreck our self-image with one too many glances in our mirror. Society has too many of us willing to stretch ourselves too far to fit into a frame we simply weren't built for. So I choose to move forward, stand tall at four foot nine, size zero jeans, and 81 pounds on my best days, chanting, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made to my reflection because now we both believe it. Society doesn't need to have anything for me. I've learned to be more than enough for myself. So we have one last poem for you guys. We thank you for your time. If you want more information about Raise It Up, about Brave New Voices, you can see any of the poets after our performance. Okay, so everybody out here likes soul food, right? Okay, I, know, I mean like real, real good soul food, like candy yams, collard greens, baked macaroni and cheese, all that stuff y'all about to go home and cook right now, all that. We wrote a poem about it. So, here it goes. I know. Where y'all at? Oh, yeah. Collard greens. Chitlins. Sweet potato pie. Fried chicken. Hot water cornbread. Oh, Man, yeah. Man, that's, that's what, what I'm, I'm talking about. about. Right. Food so good, it puts you straight to sleep. That Thanksgiving is every Sunday. Grandma cooking. Girl, what you been eating on? Cooking. Tastes so good, it make you want to slap. I don't even say it, bro. Cooking. Granny, I'm full. No, you not, honey. You're looking kind of thin. Eat some more. Eat some more. Cooking. When I was 10, my grandma introduced me to Southern food. I'm talking about that homemade dish that brought joy to your soul. I smell Granny's cooking from the end of the block, running home from the bus, trying to beat my plate to the table. For my grandma, love came piled high on plates. Catfish, collard greens, hot water cornbread. She always said what was love.
love was fed. So we congregated in love to feed our souls. Slaves food. We're, We're still, still eating the slaves food. Collard greens. Chitlins. Sweet potato pie. Fried chicken. We turned misery into recipes. We mastered turning the compost into art. We made recipes out of the leftover souls of our masters. Battered and beaten in flour. Our food kind of resembles our history. Fried and refried till it's no longer what it used to be. But can we love the soul food without being enslaved by the food chains? Family history connected by links of diabetes and high blood pressure, strokes, heart disease, and obesity. Our kitchens are a direct connection to our hospital beds we consume death with knife and fork in hand collard greens shitless sweet potato pie fried chicken man that's what i'm talking about see food so good it makes your heart stop those family recipes engraved on tombstones cooking can't tell the difference between a funeral procession and a buffet line cooking one day we'll understand the legacy of our ancestors could not be preserved in sodium saturated fats should never replace the fact that in the past soul food saved our lives but now in order to survive it must be remixed revised remade reclaimed organic cooking low fat cooking serving substances to sustain our soul breaking the cycle from food chains Spring our lives from process death and learning, learning to put the life back into soul food. You just have you got that right up and then if mom throw this away for me. Nice, right? Yeah. That was nice, right? Show them, let them know. They're going to the championship, baby. They're going to take it this year. I know they are, right? If you get a chance, check them out online. Raise it up, you doing some powerful things right here in the city. Things ain't all that bad here, are they? I mean, we got our problems, trust me. We know that. But it ain't that bad, you know? They said we had 67 murders last year. 67 fools running around here killing folks. But realize we're 100,000 strong. So 67 people out of 100,000 is not that bad. Don't get me wrong. If you were affected by the 67, it's terrible. It's horrible. But there's 987,000 of us that's not doing anything wrong. Let's celebrate that, all right? Let's celebrate that. Ladies and gentlemen, most of you guys know this, brother. Those of you who don't know him really should. This brother's been in the community for longer than me. He's been working with these kids longer than me. You know this man will teach your children how to play drums for like $3? He's been in the community making it happen for a long time. So whenever you hear about Kungana, whenever you hear Kevin Collins, you have no other choice but to support. You got that? No other choice because he's doing some powerful things. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Baba Kevin Collins. I like to say Jabo, you say C Jabo. Jabo! 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 Now let's give all ourselves a round of applause for being here. Now let's get a man upstairs a wonderful round of applause for this wonderful, beautiful day, y'all. Come on. You know, this is a very special day for me, our culture, what we do. I was just in Detroit teaching today, and I walked in the classroom. I said, the class is going to be different today. OK, can somebody tell me what the day is, what's the special? They say, is it your birthday? I said, no, nah, it's not my birthday. Uh, they come around with a thousand and one things. Nobody understand nothing about Juneteenth. We have to start teaching and preaching and showing our children what this day is about. Yeah. I'm saying y'all better put your hands together. 
Because if you don't watch what's happening, you know what? You will slide back in there. The next way you know, you'll have some chains on you. You'll have some shackles. You'll be back on the plantation. Better wake up. Because our youth need to know what's going on. The way they get to the future, they got to go back. Deal with the ancestors and what we went through to make it to the future, y'all. Kungana. We named our organization Kungana Drum and Dance Company by the way of African Drum and Dance of Parent Association, which is our nonprofit. We believe we are connected to everybody, everyone, all over. It's our pleasure. We're right in McCree Theater. We are always trying to teach each one. In order to reach one, we must teach one. So we've got to we got to work. We got a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm doing what we got to do. We're going to keep dealing with these babies. Don't my babies look beautiful, y'all, up here? That's what it's about. We're going to start off what we call the drum call. Drum call where we giving them out to our ancestors for the way they paved the way so we can be here to do what we're doing right now. Some of my youth, when they was in that parade, they was like, Bob, I'm tired. I said, guess what? Somebody who was doing something for you so you can do what you're doing right now. So you can play that drum. So you can dance. So you can go to school to get an education. So you can sit on your table and eat that chicken when you want to eat it, huh? Eat that food when you want to eat it. So we're going to do the drum call, y'all, and from there we're going to keep tuning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Ready, ready, ready? Is 